Today on This American Dice presents episode 42 of Ryoko Owari, City of Lies. With a demon on the loose, one of their number recently back from the dead, and one of the most powerful people in the city in jail, the Emerald Magistrates must determine not only what to do next, but if they even value the same justice. Find out how it all happens today on This American Dice. In our last game, at the very last scene, was everyone almost showing up to a meeting to discuss what's going on. And we had a little flash of what everybody knows about what's happening. So where is this meeting where the four of you are meeting? Tayo wants to meet at the <coughs> snow hall. So yeah. he can keep an sure. eye on mm-hmm. things. You're, all right. So you're at the civil hall. All four of you have arrived. You kind of sit down at like a low table, almost like a... Or maybe each of you have like desks that you're, that you're sitting at, like kind of low desks. Has Aji put his regular clothes back on, or is he still wearing those like uh, um, almost judge's robes that he kind of threw on when he didn't have anything to wear? Uh, no, I'm back to regular clothes. All right, he's wearing his regular clothing. Yugure is still wearing his funereal whites, or no? I think I probably had a chance to change it by now. Okay. How disappointing. We had, we, had, we had a great costume like yeah. episode, and now we're done. <laughs> and then do, and now do Tayo done. and Ishii, for the most part, look the way we usually see them in the episodes? I you've ever seen I'm them. wearing feet. <laughs> you've, seen, <laughs> you've seen Ishii without armor like on the ground. Right. And so that's not now. So, I mean, this this is within that same day, I think. Or, yeah. yeah this might be just later in that day. Well, wait, because, okay, in the end day. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'm just in plain school still. Because I was in plain clothes to tell your wife that you died. Yeah, but I went back home and got some clothes on. Yeah, but I met him there. That's true. All right, so everybody's wearing what we normally see them in. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> so, boring this, action figure. I tried, right. guys. I tried. <laughs> it's the beginning of a new new episode. We don't want to confuse the truth. That is true. That so, is true. But you guys wanted to meet up to talk stuff out. <sighs> Yeah, sure. I don't remember anything, but yeah. Um, oh, you were in. To say. We'll tell everybody all the stuff you realized. <laughs> just <brought> that shit. <laughs> like, well, well, we just had a recap or... before we recorded. It's we'll all, give, all that give, stuff. Give, give the give the quick give the quick version. Yeah. So <clears throat> there are two different mystical forces. There's the the fire, which we could assume is related to a lot of these fires that we've been seeing, um, and then there was the the oni type situation. I forget if you, Gray, saw or realized that it wasn't maybe as big as we thought. Maybe Ishii shares that information. But, yeah, whatever that Oni situation was, that's a different... Um, someone else is doing that than who's doing the fires. Uh, and there is... Um, Soshi Seryoku is the one... It's definitely related. And she's bound to a demon in some way. She's got a face on her tongue. Yeah. And we should be looking for... I spoke while I was dead. I spoke with uh, mm. a woman who floats. That on us? And... <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's been... Do you describe her looks at all? Or do you just yeah. say woman who floats? Well, I, maybe, you know, a woman who floats. And if anyone recognizes her, you might cry, but... Our character does. Like, haven't you, like, yeah, been with this floating woman? Saw her. And, like, uh, noticed no, that we, she floated? No, we know that she floated. Well, you she noticed that she didn't leave any footprints. She told me that we should be looking for princes among paupers. Hmm. You're going to show your side of the story? Because uh, he and Tyra were actually, like, near you, but we didn't even see each other, right? Well, my side of the story is we were all four together. Like, hey, or no, you weren't there. Uh, <laughs> Three of us were together. Anji wasn't there. Iji was there. And Taya was there, and we're like, hey, you ready to go fight this demon? And I'm like, all right. And then Ishii went in, and I'm like, all right. And then a uh, building collapsed on me. Not to discount you, Gray, but when Taya and I went off to go find uh, uh, a... <laughs> yep, that's the one. Not, not, not the other ones that I was going to say. Mm-hmm. When we went off to find him, I looked back, and I uh, I didn't doubt that you could do it, you Gray, but I looked at you, and you were... Still very injured from the last conflict, and I just thought I should help you, so I ran into the building ahead of you. Oh, and I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, that's not, I didn't mean to suggest that you, I was offended, or that you undermined me in any way. Okay, that's good. Don't you feel bad? Well, I feel bad because I got crushed, but it worked out. It was the will of the good. gods. It was, it was good. The gods everything were like, happened yep, according to plan. But, 
Um, it's not my plan. I went in and uh, attacked the creature because, I don't know, I just thought I would try it, and uh, somehow I hacked its arm off, just right off, clean off, and then it, as it ran away, it, it shrunk down to almost the size of a man. And you agree? Than a man? Like, like five foot, so like yeah. a small person. A yeah. small man. And you agree? the giant that it was. Did you remember when you had dealt with that, the flying oni in the moon cave? the one that you think is connected to Soshi Serioku, mm-hmm. um, Ishii had not been able to harm it at all. Mm-hmm. Well, that means I could suspect Ishii. Or his explanation that it turned into a five-foot person could indicate that it wasn't really an Oni at all. It was just an illusion, and that's why he was able to hurt it. And you remember also, Yugure, that you when Ishii cut its arm off, you saw this big, beefy lizard monster arm, like, fly off of it. But then when you looked away, like, when you, when it was out of your sight and you looked back at it, it had shrunken to, like, like the arm of a, of a puny, of a regular puny person. Right. So, yeah, when you say that it shrunk down, I'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah. And before I, you know, was incapacitated, I did see the severed arm shrink down into a tiny arm size. So mm-hmm. perhaps there was something hidden under the veil of an illusion. And it wasn't and only at all. There's definitely power, powerful magic at work here in the city. That's without a doubt. How did, uh, what is, what's up with Korchika? But said in a way that he shouldn't say. Uh, no. Oh. Speaking of all this. Is that him screaming? Yeah, is he screaming there? It's most of his fingernails. <laughs> no, speaking of this, uh, these, um, illusions, this deception, I think, uh, I see that all the time, like going on all, all over and uh, I was able to talk to with jo- Jojo mm. to uh, make sure that Korchika lived through it he's in the um, I guess the cells now below us I assume the dungeon but I think is he doesn't have a lot of time there's not much we can do I was thinking um, maybe asking Bayushi Shoju to intervene would be the only thing that would really prevent the governor from being able to just execute him outright. Would a letter reach there in time? Well, it's the, the keep is pretty close. I think we it was like three days away or something. Something like that. Mm-hmm. It's the worst thing that could happen. Say if he dies. What? Is Hayobu it's going to be only one ruler in this city? Is that so bad? We are, you know, it's our duty to keep the peace. Is this not a peaceful resolution? Well, um, this, this is, uh, I've told Ishii this, but trying to, uh, infiltrate drug cartels, I guess. And, uh, there are three heads of it, I've learned. And if there's just one, well, like, all of that focus into one person, it's going to be, a, a, I think, a big problem. Especially as just these wars that are going on has already cut the opium supply so much. Mm. It's going to, this uh, problem here in this city is going to spread to the rest of the empire, especially if they, just one person, the governor, is in charge of it. We've already known, we've already found out how corrupt she is. If Korchika is killed, or he's going to at least have to step down or do something. Someone else has to fill his that vacuum as quickly as possible. But we already saw the problem. We're just leaving the one seat empty. Um, what's your face left? Serioku. Yeah. yeah. It is certainly, the, the city has certainly gone downhill since then. Um, I'm worried there may be more players in this conflict, though. I recently found uh, the, the group that attacked the, it was the supplies warehouse? The group that burned the warehouse down. The Shisura warehouse. The Shisura warehouse, yeah. yeah. Not, not this warehouse, the warehouse before, a couple of days ago. They were, uh, they were found wearing uh, uniform badges. That was the, wait, the Shisura, the governors? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. They were found wearing the, uh, yeah, just unicorn An amulet, amulets, insignias. Uh, I'm unsure of which which family this came from. My investigation has only just begun, but <laughs> I don't think uh, the power being concentrated is not going to save the city from conflict at this point. No, we, we already had uh, evidence. That, yeah. um, Why don't we just show the medallion to Kyobu, and maybe she could stop the execution. Uh, it seems like the governor that's not in her interest and well, maybe we, we do have that evidence that the Shinjo family attacked Korchika before yes I, I hate to say this but isn't Korchika innocent so I'm pretty sure 
how it would be reasonable. She's only, she's only hacking in self-defense. It's possible I I was able to... At least I, I had her word that she would at least sit with a meeting between her and Korchika, but that was before all this happened. Hmm. I don't believe uh, the Shinjo family would have done this, however. They seem to have uh, extracted their vengeance against Korchika and had little to no reason to attack uh, the governor. I more suspect uh, Ide Baranata, he, his son died to, right? His son? Not his daughter? His son died to uh, an overdose, and he has hated those who spread that vile poison throughout the city ever since. Do you think he was working with with the clan, the Shinjo? But the, no, I think I think that's a different. I think this is an entirely different situation. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong, but to me, it seemed the Shinjo had they had done what they wished to do. They had shown, hey, don't don't be a merchant of ours and then leave because we will execute you and all your wares. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. I think they had, had you know they shown as much power as they could at that point. I, I mean, also, it could be because. You found out that Serial Q was is under the influence of like an Oni. Yeah, she's which we kind of already knew, but that means she's still working in the city. If she saw you, would be afterlife. Mm. No, I think I saw a hint of her in a brief vision. Yeah, if the, if the Kami showed you that, then it must mean she has. She's still at work here. Still influencing the city. I believe so. Who so, so, she's working for? So pretty much so. What are the final pieces of this puzzle? Who is Sarayaku working for? Who's manipulating her? I feel like that's if we find out who that is, perhaps we'll find she in the that instigator in the culprit. And, 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 and you, you Gray, in your in your vision, you did see that uh, she said to she was speaking to someone that like you forced me to be this, and you saw that there was another person behind her, like another dark figure behind her in, in your vision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she seems to at least to some degree resent what this fate that's been forced upon her and the, the whoever it is that, that did it to her. Can we make the connection too at some point that the, the Soshi family is like illusion magic or Yeah. Mm-hmm. The older Shigandra are like illusions and shit. Yeah. So if that's illusion illusion of this frog person? Yeah, I don't know what the fuck it is. Really? <laughs> it's the Kermit demon. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> she could be you- you could, we could have Ishii almost make a knowledge-related role since it is an Oni, and of the four of you, he would probably be the most knowledgeable about that oh, stuff. I feel kind of, kind of personally attacked as, <laughs> oh, no. as a man. <laughs> I'm saying you might be the one who would know this stuff. So you, you've been to the you, wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been to the wall. So what, are, the what, are we, what do we think that that would be? Would that just be a, what would the equivalent of a knowledge role in this game be? Probably blessed, stealing the Tony, yeah, blessed. That one. Dude, what? That's <laughs> a good ancestors role or something? Yeah, that's not really knowledge. Yeah, I but feel like it could be a blessed role, but not. It's a failed commune with the Kage role. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, it, this wouldn't be like like dark, evil, like forbidden knowledge. It would be like, like oh, I've perhaps fought something like this or heard other men. So, what do you think it's a like, sagacious move? It could be a sagacious move. Uh-huh. Would that you think like replace just knowledge? Uh, yeah, yeah. So go ahead and do that. It's almost like a Rita situation rule about this thing, but all right, six plus nine, nine. Okay, not quite Damn. Fifteen. Okay, <laughs> yes, <laughs> very good. So, uh, so nine. So it's a mixed result. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say you've heard of you've heard of stuff like this before. Um, You've heard of a thing called uh, a panic devil, is like the name that people refer to it, and these, uh, and that there are that there are monsters that from from some vantage points seem way more ferocious, way more uh, way bigger and dangerous than they are, and um, and I'm gonna say you look back to you look back to what it was doing. And you realize, like you heard, you saw it like wound pretty badly. Several, um, yeah, several like thunder guard or firefighters or uh, some of Korchika's retainers. But nowhere. But you're like you're like comparing its size, where it's like, wait, it's like 15 feet tall and like with huge bulging Mark McGuire home run muscles. 
Like, this thing should have been able to, like, kill everybody at the conflict. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yet it only, like, severely wounded several people. And you're like, oh, this thing, its whole deal is it's just terrifying from certain angles. Very <laughs> okay. So I think that's what you you learn about this, so you, but you you remember, remember, yeah, and you remember that it, it's not a unique thing. It's just it's, like a it is, it's, a, it's a demon, but it's like it's not like you know your demon is unique. Um, and if he's saying that Soshi Serioku is attached to that demon you guys saw in the cave, I know then, that's not this. Then that demon would be it not only isn't this, but then that demon would be unique. This is not a unique creature. It is, it's a it, it's just one of many. Yeah, it's a, it's an oni almost with a lowercase o. So yeah, Ishii, I think can remember like with Ishii those with those things connecting, like connecting all those dots. That's some of the info that like, you kind of like bring to your mind. And maybe he couldn't remember some of that before because he was too busy wanting to kill this thing. Hmm. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Cool. Uh, I'll probably not show them. Okay. Tricky. Oh, what should we do with Korchi? Uh, I think I think your plan to talk to the person, to talk to whatever, is probably fine. I mean, in my opinion, Korchi is just going to get removed from power because this makes him like, seem like, oh, really? Maybe, um, it, I may, could, maybe it saves him from death. So my plan's well, better then, because yeah, it saves space. Yeah, I could try... Just like how do you suggest it to talk to the governor? She did give me her word that she would meet with Korchika and maybe if she won't do that anymore, at least I could try to talk to her about yeah. putting other people in the cartel seats that are empty. Confident in your silver tongue. Yeah, Jesus. That was a unconfidence play. Um, who sh- who should we who would we want in those positions? Oh sh- why not yourself? Let's, let's put Korchika back. I'll ruin yourself. You could be the third. All right. So, real, real quick, real quick mood check among you guys. The thing that's being discussed here is there are these illegal opium cartels. Yeah. And the, I think I think we 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 hit that before, and I don't think it kind of hit home. What? But that like like that yes, Korchika and also Hayobu are a part of these, and Soshi Serioku was a part of these. Mm-hmm. So I think that's probably the first time. That has been discussed among the entire group. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, I guess we we've talked a bunch about it. So it's nothing new for us, but yeah, that I is kind of true. And Tidy did say like, "Oh, I had been infiltrating them." Yeah, yeah. Also, kind of a big reveal. Yugure yeah. is currently considering how he feels about it. Because first of all, there's been talk about Korchika's innocent. He's like getting tortured, and he's like, "Oh, also Korchika's a drug lord." <laughs> like, wait a minute, <laughs> those two are right. Not. And you know, the thing he was arrested for was for being a drug lord, right? So I think you guys like we should say help him up. Actually, <laughs> no, I think this is the right thing that's supposed to happen. And then follow up. Now there's this other drug lord still out there, not the main current threat, which is like the demon stuff. But there's a drug lord. Yeah, that is. Uh, and so now he's thinking maybe he needs to write a letter to the Emerald Champion that says, look, we found this drug lord, but removing them might, you know, cause this might disrupt the city. The only, yeah, Thoughts? The only, the only <laughs> issue is that we have character? no. No. So you, you, you don't want to bring that up? Just. Yeah, the only well, issue is we have no evidence. Otherwise, you should would. Because evidence in this world is you have to find nobles who are willing to testify. Right. Fuck me if I found one. Right. I just know. Maybe Korchika. Maybe I could get Korchika to flip at this point. That's the only reason I would want Korchika to live. So maybe I could get him to flip. I would want him to live, lose everything. All this the is titles really and everything else. Yeah, let's just, just switch to in character. character. Yeah. Okay, in character. Yugure has shared his thoughts. He I, said all that? Yeah. Oh, but you're going to write a letter, so... Well, you know, you're bringing up the idea... Um, so far, I've been I'm only, unable to find a noble that has uh, agreed that these, these you know, Korchika and uh, who are part of a drug ring, and the reason I'm on board with finding a way to save Korchika's life is that, without a doubt after this point, I, he's not going to go back into power. He's not going to be in control of his family in this city. I mean, yes or no? Yeah. What do you think? I feel it would be better if he did, because 
especially if we know who the heads of the cartels are, that let, gives us leverage to make sure that they don't they do the least amount of harm as possible. I feel like I would rather him lose everything because it'd be easier to get him he, to testify. He has lost everything. And who's he going to testify? The, Just against the governor? Against Hyobu. But who do we put in those spots then? Hopefully no one. But that would cause way more harm to the entire empire. This, these, these illegal opium cartels. I'm not talking about the distribution of legal opium is a fine and upstanding thing that is produced and dealt with in the city. But the leaders of the illegal dro- opium cartels should not... There should not continue to be an illegal opium cartel here. Period. It's... I feel it's a necessary evil. If we don't... If we stop it, it's going to come back up probably even worse. And if... I think we were sent... Four people were sent here on purpose to keep a tighter rein on what's going on here. It's not... It's going to... This is the opium capital of possibly the world. At least the empire. The important world. This is the world. Are you kidding me? What are you talking about, the world? What? Why don't we let the criminal who's been caught suffer for his crimes... And then, if there's an issue with a, a power void or a necessary evil, that can be brought up to the Emerald Champion to make that type of determination if it's something allowed to continue. Yeah, yeah the impression that's the reason you're here. I mean, the, em- the Emperor doesn't write the laws, just people like us did, you know? It's, sure. It's only illegal because of the suffering it causes, but if we are in a position to lessen the suffering that it causes as much as possible. Opium... Like a train line is safer than a... The suffering it causes... The suffering suffering that opium causes in the city is is an epidemic. So many people have died and so many lives have been ruined by this drug. Yeah, I think because these cartels... Greed got... They were too greedy. They weren't checked by people like us. They were using the the promise of money more than I think that at this point their greed is being used against them by the supernatural by the wielder of the supernatural things we've been observing you may very well be correct so it's the the cartel itself is a weakness of the city because the cartel is the embodiment of greed almost from the city at least I don't think we're arguing Uh, I think we all agree cartels are bad Uh, no I don't think Ty is arguing that he he is he is not. He is saying the cartel. I mean, it is. He knows it's bad. Question is whether he's not saying it's not bad. He's just saying it's necessary. It's not whether it's evil. It's whether it's necessary. It's yeah. an argument. So we're not arguing whether they're good or bad, but we should be talking about what we should be doing. I say removing those who are in control in the cartels, all of them, and then from there. Uh, it will cause massive civil unrest. Yeah. Totally. If you remove the cartel. And what then? You have a bigger problem. At least we could save Korichika and deal with the cartels a, a, at least a different way. Why save Korichika? Because. We think he's a, a useful we can use him to testify. To down, I hope. We, need, we need nobles to testify. And he would be. The issue is that his word would mean less because of the crimes he's been, he would be convicted of. That is a problem. That's the negative against keeping him. Like, that's the negative against his use as a tool, is that his word means little after this. But it's better than nothing. And right now, we've not found anybody that's willing to testify. But why do we need someone just to remove the governor? Yeah, she's super corrupt. I mean, she's pretty much, as far as, we're, as, far as I am aware, she has deposed all of the rest of them in order to consolidate power for herself and caused immense harm within the city. Burn down buildings. She's at least burned down one building as far as I'm aware. Has she, though? As far as I thought. From what I've seen, everyone's been acting in self-defense. I think I discovered that she tried to get rid of the Soshi. You had, you discovered that her merchant, Subtle, was the one who hired Jaw to kill the, the Ronin Jaw, the assassin, at a, Subtle, Hayobu's merchant. God. Jesus. Okay. We've got, we've got all right, all right, stuff, right. but it's, I didn't know it's yeah. a lot of names. So Subtle, who's in the book, had hired the Ronin Jaw, who's also in the book, mm-hmm. to kill Serioku's merchant watchful, the right. woman who first contacted you guys and gave you the first inkling that there was problems. Yeah. And and that that was the uh, the first kind of thing that happened, right? That we know. 
the first thing that happened, you know, was that... As far as the cartel war goes? That all those you know, I don't think the rest of these guys necessarily know, but all three of the cartels got hit on the same night. Watchful was just the only one who called you guys and said, hey, I'm a legal opium merchant. Someone stole my legal opium that I have the legal right to do stuff with. I thought that I found out she, the governor made uh, moves against the Sochi first. Lord. E, okay, you're talking about just like had, has been general. in the background. Yes, she has. She's okay. been undercutting her, her market in Phoenix lands, you learned. Right, okay, good. Yes. So if these, I didn't tell them that, which I don't think mm-hmm. I did. I, I think we'll reveal that. I uh, thought okay. they reveal that she started this whole shit. You want, yeah. you want to tell them that real quick? Yeah, I forget how I figured that out. But I'll just say, like, oh, through my investigation, okay. I um, I found out that um, the governor was the first one, first, the first one that I can find evidence of uh, going against someone. She was undercutting the Sochi family and getting more of the pie, as it were. So it seems like she, I guess, would be the most corrupt. Korchika, for what it's worth, has after they been, all made moves against each other, has been, uh, yeah, has been cooperating the most with me. But he's also part of my family, so I don't think that really exonerates him. But it's taking down a governor is that's a huge thing. It's big, but she has I mean, she's caused such unrest in the city, I don't know what else. Who, like, can we trust Jojo anymore? Especially after Perhaps if we'll we see what has happened down? to his mother and I think, keep his wits about him and not what will happen to him. I don't know, it's I defer it to everyone else, but it's, this seems like more of a a scorpion problem that we should deal with in a scorpion way if we can convince these the governor to to what step down to work to work with us and let her let us oversee what she's doing so she's she doesn't overstep these bounds again and she's, we can regulate she's consolidated power in such a way if we i can, don't think she would uh as, as she was so close to victory and consolidating power in the city i don't think she would uh willingly surrender the power that she's gained because right now we have other than the fact that we know we have we have no cards in our hand we have no i, I mean the fact that we know is a huge thing it I, 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 I mean i would i would suggest against um Igre's suggestion of going to the emerald champion but that's a bargaining chip we can use to try and convince her to you know, play by our rules like what's her track record not great you're right <laughs> no, no. <laughs> like before we came to the city yeah. Was a track record as governor before that. There's a lot of people your... kind of liked her because correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like in the dossier people liked her because there was like she kind of made the city less dangerous. They um, you can remember Matsushigeko, the magistrate before Narutoki. She who you have her like diaries or her mm-hmm. journal. She said the problem with uh, Governor Hayobu is that she's a great governor but chooses to be an average one. Mm, yeah, a totally fun and profit. Mm. Something seems, like that. Seems like she's just she's trying to read, but maybe if we can intimidate her or scare her, it would be incredibly difficult. But I guess we do have sort of a way to own her and just threaten that, then we might easier route. So at the topic at hand, do we try to save Kuchika or do we just let him die? Do we let him suffer for his crimes? Any votes for saving him? We should save him. I. Suggest we save Cory Chica. I'm tired of this fighting. I'm hurt. I lost one of my crutches. <laughs> I don't even know where that shit is anymore. I don't either. I hope it's not. The <laughs> only reason you said to save him is as a bargaining chip in order to preserve the status quo. And the, in order to save him, we have to compromise our own positions and go against the laws of the Emperor. It's just all downside it's true uh, but you have to look at it what causes what will cause the least suffering overall what our role to follow the laws not to make those kind of judgment calls i think that's exactly why we, we were given these positions is to interpret laws we were given these positions because the natural guy died well i won't stop anyone else who wants to try to save him but i certainly don't vote in favor of it <laughs> i'm also not going to stop anyone are you the one who wants to save him? <laughs> what? That's my opinion, though. I voted to save him. No, no, I'm saying that. It's just the thing to say. But, but if he's to be saved, I think it should be in order to give him a second chance to be a better man, not as a bargaining chip. 
I don't think he really did anything wrong except being a cartel lord. I mean, he just acted in self-defense. For what I was, for what I was, right? His yes. status as cartel lord did I take the most issue this, with? This is some kind of Florida self-defense law, my guys. It's a political law. Okay. I mean, did he, did he act stand your ground by kidnapping <laughs> yeah, the dog? Kidnapping Miami's. people, killing, it's got kind of fun. What are you going to say? I mean, he acted out of retaliation, not out of spite. Yeah, I'll we'll give you that. Right? So, is that not natural in our Nobody society? Nobody's about that part. No, <laughs> it's not exactly right. That. It's probably not justified. So, the only not issue with being a cartel crime lord, okay? And committing crimes. The role in which he killed most Dead. Men. Burn the whole city. Everyone's guilty. Okay, so what I think, I think we've kind of hit our, we've kind of talked <clears throat> this one out. So I think I'm going to ask what each of you comes away from this meeting with. If we're collecting votes or something, maybe tie us at the end and just stand up and say, like, well, I've, I've shared my opinions, but I'm going to um, defer to Ishii because, and then it's like, a, um, like you could probably see her or him, like, uh, like hesitating, just like um, Asako. It's come to my attention that Asako Anjo has uh, moved the responsibility of captain of the magistrates in the city to uh, Ishii um, sure. for various reasons, including um, mistakes I made perhaps in my past. Yeah, I think you agree. Maybe a retcon is offered up a segue by saying, like, well, I vote against it, but since you're the. Oh, perfect. Since I was the in charge of the four of us. Um, I would defer to you, and then... Oh, yeah, that's, that's way better. Yeah, I like that. And then, um, yeah, I think Taya was just like... It was a, a family matter long ago. Um, Ishii was actually, I guess, the one to discover it. <laughs> Pauses for a second. Yeah, I, uh, Taya was actually my brother. This was, no, this was not the uh, this was not the reason you're no longer the head person. As far as the only person who knows is, as of this moment, you and I. It is your, of course, it is your, your, your prerogative to share it. With everybody else, but it was not ever told to the Emerald Champion or to the Fasaka Lodge or anyone. It's not my place to keep any secrets any longer. <laughs> Gotta get that honest, the XP <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh Ty was my brother. Um, wife and I decided to uh, that I should take his place because he, well, for various reasons, but I was raised in court and not on the battlefield. As Ishii was also able to uh, surmise that this is one of the reasons I was able to infiltrate the cartels. As I think I've always made clear, that's where my strength lies. <laughs> Tayo just sits down. <laughs> you know, just sit down and you're like, well, that's me. Um, on the matter of Korchika, he is, uh, he is your clansman. Feel free to, if you feel it was right to to save him from his from his early demise. Whatever you think it's, would be a, more strategically important. Deferred it to you. Did you just deferred it back to him? No, I, I said... I pretty much said strategically, I don't think it, after we've discussed it, I don't think it matters as much as I was initially thinking. And that I'm pretty much saying, this is a family matter. Mm-hmm. Do you want it? It's, it's your family member. Save him if you want. I don't think it matters strategically anymore. Mm-hmm. I think he has lost all of his power and his word is useless at this point. He's your family member. Like, it's a family matter. Okay. Yeah. That's my thought on that. I'll leave it. This leave it to be her. Mayushi showed you. Okay. So, what do we take? What do we, what do each of you take away from this meeting? Uh, I don't know. Tyro has no balls. Uh, <laughs> shit. Just literally. Literally. No, no balls. Totally. None. I don't know that he revealed the woman. He revealed Tyro was my I, brother. Yeah, I think I yeah. skirted. He yeah, skirted right. many but you things. Do, you do know that literally the person he's claimed to be this whole time, he is not that person. You know that. He's his... Sure. He's, 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 he's the sibling. He's the sibling. Mm-hmm. So Tayo. So what does Aji take away from this meeting? Tayo's Tayo's sibling. It's just, uh, it's a <laughs> shock and awe. That, uh, <laughs> someone could do that. <laughs> Has the ability and the skill. It's pretty much I true. recognize that. Uh, the cartel, they, like, uh, Aji kind of, he always expected, you know, he, he did opium. <laughs> like, there's, there's like, obviously, like, you do, you do drugs, like, you know, there's like cartel, like, distributing them, but you're not, you're not, like, privy to how it operates and stuff and who's in charge. Um, so he knows more about that. But you agree, what's you agree's big takeaway? 
Well, I think he's going to have to... He prides himself on truthfulness, so Tayo coming out is just really good at lying. <laughs> like, <laughs> his main thing is something he'll have to stew on, but um, mainly I think Yugre is thinking the cartels and the drug stuff is just like clearly a bad thing. The subtleties of it are all just like irrelevant, and he, but he thinks it's just clearly a bad thing that is like priority number two at this point, and everyone <laughs> seems to be focusing on it. So he feels a little extra lonely because he's the only one <laughs> who's like doesn't think it's the most important thing. And also now, like, one of his trusted friends is just, like, a liar. Super liar. <laughs> All right, how about Ishii? What's Ishii's takeaway? Um, well, there's... Ishii is also totally on track with, uh, you know, drug cartels are bad, okay? And, uh... <laughs> and half of the magistrates... See, five of them. They're like, oh, yeah, I mean, we'll just make sure the drug cartel keeps going. And that's, like... Plan number one, make sure it's replaced instead of, you know, making sure this crime that's being committed is, you know, maybe done something about. No, I didn't really say that. I just said no, that. but you were, you were similar. Ishii feels that, like, like Ty was very, like, oh yeah, drug cartels are cool, it's good, it's gonna no. cause so much harm if they go away, so they need to stay <laughs> around. <laughs> yeah, you got that. And, yeah, so. <laughs> And obviously, Yugre was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Drugs are bad. And Ishii has been that the whole time. Kai was basically the John Morgan of opium. But uh, you weren't Everyone really against it, and you were kind of for it, so you're like 100% in the four category as far as Ishii is concerned. Right. So Ishii's, Ishii's big takeaway, though. Ishii's big takeaway is half of the magistrates oh, okay. I have been asked mm -hmm. what is up with your fellow magistrates half of them are like yeah fuck it people break court laws I don't give a shit okay but drugs that's are half of half of the magistrates <laughs> are thinking that way drugs are bad right. even's good so. drugs are bad even's fine fuck it alright and finally Taya just big takeaway um I guess uh Taya's still upset that he's not the captain anymore he uh <laughs> um thinks it's a doesn't understand, I guess, why um, everyone else is being so humble. Like, oh, we have to do the letter of the law. It's like, no, that's why we were put in these positions to like, keep safety, not dot every I and stuff. The next three to five days are three to five days filled with tension and also havoc. All right, and I'm going to go around the table and ask you guys in what ways they are filled with those things, but I'm going to throw out two things off the bat. One, there's an Oni on the loose. There's this demon that, 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 that there's a demon that got away, and uh, it got away. And I'm going to say it doesn't just disappear, so it definitely reappears. And so, if you want to use that in your thing absolutely and we can deal with that even when you guys are doing stuff so that's still out there the other thing is um, pretty quickly people get wind that um, that opium is even in shorter supply than it had been previously and so fights break out among especially some of like the firemen gangs about stuff um, related to who has opium still and who doesn't? And the, the, the yeah, cartels can't even do that, right? Come on. So, uh, that's right. Yeah, uh, and addition. Yeah, so you can do that. I'll let you guys kind of set further things that kind of give us that idea of how we can feel that tension and havoc um, in the city. So, who wants to tackle it first? Uh, I'll say at the temple. Uh, What's the temple where Priestess Bay is at? The, the Priestess of the, the, the Temple of Amaterasu, the, the Sun Goddess. Yes, the Sun Goddess. I'll say the lines for their pharmacy are longer than ever. Okay, so just way more people are trying to get legal opium. And there's kind of like maybe a little shoving here and there. Oh, okay. Back up. Glaucoma. I'd say that pretty much like every single day, couldn't you, right? The Witch Hunter? Mm -hmm. He's just having like his stage is completely filled with executions like every single day he's on like a manhunt trying to 
at once quell people's fears about like oh there's somebody who's like somebody in Oni and like this is a problem but also now people are like holy shit Okay. He's killed like fifty people this week. What the hell's going on? So his, his his executions become extremely numerous. Yeah. I'm thinking there's like uh just open firefighter gang wars now. They're just like riot like especially in this disputed territory. So mm-hmm. with uh, that fire just happened. Okay. It's like maybe like once a week or every day or two. It's just like, well, there's a riot here. Oh, yeah. Two firefighter gangs are fighting. Right, so they're probably also the strong arm are probably like trying to move on to these guys. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, they're weak. There's oh, all yeah. shit going on. Yeah, okay. maybe you have to like redraw this entire map, or it's not even clear now what territory is what. Gotcha. Yeah. It's all fucked up. Okay. Just like fishing, right? Yeah, absolutely. They're fishermen. I think there's a lot less fish mm-hmm. because the fishermen are scared of the water. Because okay. that's the oh, is. All right. Ishii and Aji both, could you make a face roll? Ishii at just one, Aji at two. Ooh, fuck two? Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that kills Aji. He has that crazy dip. He has a face thing armor. where he can not face armor. I yeah. think this kills the Aji. Yeah. That's a full value of face damage. We're going to be one roll at six, but I'm gaining one that's not good enough. So, six, so that becomes seven. Yeah, because I'm gaining a face, right? So yes. it takes the plus one, you know, which, so, he, uh, he only has face armor for the roll itself. It's not actually face damage taken. Okay. Huh. <laughs> That's still He still yeah. takes two face. It's just the roll modifier is changed by negative two to be zero. Is that or, the case? It's minus three. Minus three, Jesus. Okay. No, so I, get, I rolled a seven minus one, so uh-huh. I rolled a six. Well, that's really six. good. Okay. If you still take the face damage, though. Are you at, like, how much face damage are you at, dog? Up. Five. You're at five. All right, so you're not no. you're not going to take one. Oh, so you, so you, so you were at five, or you're at five now. I'm at five now. You're at five, five now. The plus two? Okay, that's good. All right. Um, all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just there. Sure. What does this mean? Okay. So, so did roll us just for fun. Mm-hmm. So Ishii's okay. So because otherwise I'd say it was a pretty it was it's a pretty embarrassing thing that it's like oh he got mugged by these firemen. But I think just with all the havoc intention, most people have bigger fish to fry about this stuff. But with Ishii, there's some some slight issues that will come up will have come up later. <laughs> I'm messing myself up, but I feel it might be appropriate for Tayo to take face after admitting after having to admit that stuff. Yeah. Sure, yeah, sure, absolutely. I'd say that's a big one, though. Yeah, it's probably real big. It's only it's got, at least six. six. It's only in front of three people, but it's got, it's got to be like at least two or three. Damn, I mean, it's, it's gonna affect what you guys think. Or two. I think I vote for down because it's only in front of us, and unless we make. I think you don't care about it. It's not really affecting your reputation at large. You've already made a big deal and cared about it. <laughs> well, well, no, I didn't make a big deal. I just you mentioned like, that I care about, about it. it. He means if he tells people. people. Oh, yeah. that's really I think, it's what, I think okay. is what, what, what you're kind of getting at. Like, if he, he makes, if he makes a big deal that just to Tayo, it's different than if he were to go out and discuss it among others. Yeah. It's pretty... Um, yeah, I vote so for two. Let's go with two, then. Sure. So you roll plus. Yeah. Oh. All right. Oh, you did. Fourteen. So, look. All right. So yeah, the humiliation snowball says rumors run wild. Oh. All right. So yeah. So you take three actually rather than two. Somebody's loose lipped. Mm-hmm. Tell me you had no face. Mark this whole fucking. How did that even no, occur? I had it, but I healed it. Take the, I feel like taking a face from once. I forget what. Yeah, Should I get a, mo- a moisturizer? Three, man. My face is all fucked yeah, up. Yeah, I have that face mask too. And that helps in me. It's, it's armor and scorpions all have it. Yes. Okay. All right, so um, as a heads up, in these three to five days, if anyone is hurt and they want to recover, they're automatically, if anybody's hurt and they want to recover, they're automatically going to heal one wound. If you um, have a scene that would involve you just staying at home and resting, and thus you could like meet with people, but it would have to be at home, or you could have meetings via letters, um, you can rest, uh, you can heal an additional, you can heal an additional wound. I'm just healing my one, yeah. Oh, so you automatically heal one. 
Yeah, so, every, so anybody who's injured automatically will heal one. Unless you want to keep it. And yeah, you don't have to. It's very weird. <laughs> you may you know, you to, like really strain yourself on like <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> right. But so but if you were if you were to just rest at home, you could still have meetings, but they have to be in your home. Or you can do it via letters, you can heal a second wound. Alright. So in these three to five days, what's going down? What is what is your what is the thing you're trying to do? And I know most people are trying to do multiple things. Well, this is a dark twist for you, Gray, but I think I am with um, Renyu. Uh, During the stuff, Brandon said... Oh my god, dude. Like, I was, like, gonna kind of, like, apprentice to him to some degree Mm -hmm. and try to learn more about this stuff, and I want to find the dark stuff that's going down, and he's hunting people, and I think I'm doing doing it with him. Like, we're going around and finding people... And Yugri is not thrilled about this, but, mm-hmm. like, something has to get done. And he's finding people, and I'm with them, and I'm like, yeah, they're Excellent. doing some messed up stuff. Oh, right. Like, there's just a lot of people well, who are bad enough that Yugri in his current state is convinced that, yeah, they can be made examples of. Cool. Jesus. So, um, I think we can, and some retconning can be involved here with this. But um, rat, I could e- we could either have you like read a situation to try to get some more information, um, especially if you remember me back from game twenty. He told he gave you some suggestions about you realized some things about um, Asako Kinto, the old man with the runes in his mm-hmm. backyard, mm-hmm. and how he had said that there were people who were part of the the snake cult. Mm-hmm. Is what I'm going to call it. Sure. But who left? And basically, like, oh, they just kind of ghosted us. They let. They disappeared. Right. Uh, they seemed to like lose interest. And you realize, like, those could be because you knew all the people that were involved there with him seemed fine. Right. But wait a minute, there were these other people who disappeared. Um, so, yeah. so I could have you either roll a situation with that, or we could do this as part of a defy danger kind of role, where you defy this uh, danger of this this investigation going off course. I like to read the situation one. Okay. <laughs> no, define danger. That's not. That's not the good one. <laughs> right, but then I, depending on how the role goes, we could basically just say that Renu and him are going to find these people. They just have to avoid this getting bad. You know whatever. He's really bad at that. So I'm wrong. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's so, All right. So we got a three and a five. That's one and nine. All right, so nine. Cool. So you have to ask one of those read a situation questions. Um, yes, what's my enemy's true position? All right. So if you if you and Renyu ask around, and essentially you notice that Renyu applies um, a lot of force in asking mm-hmm. around, uh, you could discover. Um, I'll even give you a name for this person. This girl is named Dreamer. Oh boy. Oh boy. And she, yeah. yeah. So, and, and Dreamer can tell you uh, that, like, she was one of the people that left. And he basically, like, uh, Renyu starts to kind of, like, almost threaten her. And uh, eventually she kind of cracks pretty easily with all these threats that uh, there was a man named Henjo. And Henjo um, was someone who had visited Asako Kinto and discussed those things with him. And she had briefly met with Henjo to discuss those matters. And basically, and basically their discussions took a much darker turn and they were much more focused around rather than, um, the pale eye and the bright eye that Asako Kinto had discussed that he saw in these runes. It was far more focused on like specifically worshiping the moon and, um, uh, she can tell you that like blood started to get involved and she got out of there basically. Like she just kind of made herself too busy to come back. And um, she'd been threatened by some of them periodically. Some of the people who still hung out with Menjo, uh, which mostly were new faces that she hadn't seen before. But again, she just kind of kept too busy and hadn't really heard back from them. So, but she can give you uh, the name of this guy, Henjo, and she says she thought that he was, she thought that he was just a merchant. 
All right. Is that like, I don't know, do we follow up that lead and that's where a bunch of these executions come from? Or is that toward the end of the... Sure, if that's, if that's what you want to say, that like um, some of those leads that you follow up could, could be that. So like you find where this person, Henjo's house is, he's a lumber merchant. Um, but when you get there, uh, the thing that you learn about him is he's, um, he had begun kind of liquidating a lot of his assets Mm. Um, and he had like some servants that were there uh, and I think maybe some of these executions could be like maybe some of these servants or the, and this girl Dreamer Dreamer got out of it so, yeah I don't know still guilt of what just being there what's good in right, baby yeah Renu's kind of a tough guy can't, can't, I don't think you can kill 50 people all week and be like totally correct on all of them right so totally correct I think is enough yeah. for him. so are you okay with are you okay with Kuni Renu Executing this lady? Because there's still light in your gray's heart. Is he going to get taken in by the manic pixie dream girl? Dreamer girl, I mean? Uh, <laughs> I think this character has been even... This, yeah, oh my. Okay. <laughs> we only saw this character for a second, so... <laughs> even less so than the manic, pic, manic pixie dream girl stereotype. Um, I don't think so. I mean, she specifically said she, like, avoided them when she figured out what was going on. You don't want them to kill them. Right. Ooh, I think that's going to require a manipulate role. Yeah. To get this guy to go along with that. All right. Go for it. I can't just, like, actually just the savior of the people. Oh, this is a dark time. <laughs> <laughs> Three and six. Yes. Nice. Nine plus... Plus one. Awesome. Yeah, you did it. Yeah, so Renu... Renu seems like... Uh, I think he says something like, "There's a lot of there's a lot of people toying with darkness here. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time till all of them end up in hell. Something like that. That's why I'm helping you weed out the worst of them. But the people who toy with darkness and the people who run from it have to be um, separated in our minds." City of Lies is Tone as Kakita Aji, Brandon as Hida Ishii, David as Bayushi Tayo, Andrew as Agasha Yugure, and Austin as your Game Master. The theme music for City of Lies is Mission of Danger by Lobo Loco. Additional music for this episode includes Quaalude by Cowpay. This American Dice Ryoko Wari City of Lies uses the City of Lies box set by Greg Stoles, published by Alderac Entertainment Group. The mechanics used is a modified PBTA system by Brendan Taylor of Galileo Games. Join us next time for more This American Dice. I would love the idea of it keeps shrinking and then climbing into our mouth. Yeah. Just putting its face out mm-hmm. through our tongue. Yeah. Yay! Her, back, mama. her tongue is just scary mm. from certain angles. But then your voice is Bruce Willis. Mm. Look who's talking. <laughs> Let's see.